This video is all about what is a nucleophile. So we're gonna go into a little bit more detail and talking specifically about nucleophiles and nucleophilicity, what do nucleophiles do, and how do we recognize nucleophiles when we see them. So here I've just drawn out a very standard substitution reaction. Uh, in fact, it's a substitution reaction that goes through the SN2 mechanism we have propyl bromide reacting with hydroxide ion, and I haven't drawn in the balance charge here, but you can maybe imagine that there's a sodium present or potassium, it doesn't matter. We have uh, alcohol as our product, propyl alcohol, and we have Br- as our leaving group. So, like I said, this video is gonna be about nucleo nucleophiles and understanding what this word means, nucleophile. So when you look at the word nucleophile, it comes from two words, which is nucleus, uh, nucleo comes, nucleus loving, nucleus loving. And you think about the nucleus, what's in the nucleus? Well, it's gonna be a mixture of protons and neutrons. And proton, neutrons don't have any charge, so we just really care about the protons, which are positively charged. So nucleophiles love positive charge, and, and this makes sense in that the basis of chemistry really is opposite charges attract, like charges repel. So nucleophiles are species that, nucleophiles, they donate electrons to form new bonds, okay? They donate, actually should be more specific, they donate a pair of electrons to form new bonds. Okay, and let's just look into in this specific reaction, why or how is our hydroxide ion a nucleophile? Well, if you think about our propyl bromide here, we have Br, which is somewhat electronegative, we're so gonna have a partially negative charge, and it's attached to the carbon here, which is less electronegative than bromine, so this bond here is going to be somewhat polar, in fact, it's a, it's a polar covalent bond. The bromine's gonna have more than its share of the electrons in this bond between bromine and carbon, and that is going to mean that our carbon is gonna have a partial positive charge on it. So the hydroxide ion, which again, it has a negative charge, high electron density, it's gonna be attracted to this partial positive charge. So in that sense, it's again, a nucleophile in that it is nucleus loving, it, it loves positive charge. So, they have a pair of electrons they can donate to form new bonds. And so just, we should draw out a few more examples of other types of nucleophiles because there's actually, in organic chemistry, you will see three, in total, you'll see three different types of nucleophiles. Um, the most common, and the, the example that we're gonna see here is nucleophiles as lone pairs. So hydroxide ion donating a lone pair to our bromide, and maybe we should draw out the actual arrow here. So lone pair going to our carbon and the other arrow going to our bromide, so donating a pair of electrons to this carbon. They can act as, nucleophiles can be lone pairs. They can also be pi bonds. So later on, we talk about the reactions of alkenes. We can talk about pi bonds as nucleophiles. And there's even some examples where single bonds can act as nucleophiles. And again, that, that comes a little bit later on. But for now, let's just think about nucleophiles as sources of lone pairs. So any species which has a lone pair can potentially act as a nucleophile. So let's just write out a few just simple examples of species we might know which can act as nucleophiles. Like water is a perfect example. Uh, water can act as a nucleophile. We've, we've seen hydroxide ion up here before we have, uh, let's say, the sulfide ion, SH minus. Uh, let's say we had CH3 with a lone pair and a negative charge. That could certainly act as a nucleophile. It's got a lone pair. Uh, we could have a halide ion, so Cl, Cl minus could be a nucleophile. We could have a alkyl group let's say attached to a nitrogen and a lone pair. That could certainly act as a nucleophile as long as it's got a lone pair. Uh, we could have a carboxylic acid, which 
could have a lone pair either on the carbonyl oxygen or on the oxygen of the carboxylic acid itself, the OH, the hydroxyl group of the carboxylic acid. You know, I've only drawn a very small number of examples, but all of these species can act as nucleophiles. They all have lone pairs on them. And for that reason, like I said, in the, in the, it, by this point in the course, you've probably seen examples where you may have molecules which are drawn out, but the lone pairs haven't been explicitly drawn out in this structure. We sort of skip over drawing the, out those lone pairs, but don't forget that those lone pairs are there because it's really important to know that those lone pairs are there because we can potentially use them in reactions. They can act as nucleophiles, as a source of electrons. It's also important to know really what can't act as a nucleophile, and, and it may be worth bringing up just two simple examples for that. For example, CH4, this molecule here, just CH4, carbon with four single bonds around it, can not act as a nucleophile. Uh, in order for carbon to act as a nucleophile, we, will, we don't have a pair of electrons here on this carbon. And this carbon could not donate any pair of electrons in order to, to form a bond in this case. So we can, we can safely say that CH4 is not a nucleophile for the purposes that we're going to go through in this course. Another example of something which is not a nucleophile would also be NH4. So if you had four hydrogens attached to nitrogen, a positive charge on the nitrogen, notice there's no lone pairs on your nitrogen in this case, as opposed to NH3, where it did have a lone pair. So another example of a molecule which cannot act as a nucleophile. So bottom line for this is, if something has a lone pair, it can potentially act as a nucleophile. That is, it can potentially donate a pair of electrons to a, a positively charged or a partially positively charged species to form uh, a new bond in a reaction. So again, to donate a lone pair or donate a pair of electrons to form a new bond. So in the next video, we're going to go through some of the factors which make something actually a good nucleophile or not a good nucleophile.